Thanks for the people who sent their online learning yesterday. It was brilliant. Um, great to see people working so hard um, and getting on really well with their maths. We're going to take our next step in our maths today, but before we do that, we're just going to have a bit of a recap. So here we've got three tens, add four tens. Three tens, add four tens is 34. And then we've got two lots of that. So we're looking at multiplying that by four, uh, by two, sorry. So just take your time to have a little go at that question, and then we'll recap it to make sure you remember what we did yesterday. I've laid it out for you here, how I would do it, just to remind you, and then you're just gonna work out the little bit below. So pause the video now and just work out that little bit below for me. Okay, we'll have a quick go through. So the first thing I'm gonna work out is two times four. 2 times 4 is 8, and then the next bit I look at is my next bit is 2 times 3, but it's not 3, it's 3 tens, so it's 2 times 30, okay, 2 times 30, I know 2 times 3 is 6, it gets 10 times bigger, it's going to be 60. I can then do 8 add 0, 8 add 0 is 8, and the 6 is 68, okay. Now, keep that where you are, because we're going to use this today, this recap reminding ourselves of the expanded method. And today we're going to look at the compact method. So we're going to get the same answer for a question, but we're going to look at a bit more of an efficient way of putting it down. The expanded method still has a place. This is still really useful, and we'll come back to using this over and over again, really to explain our understanding. And when we move on, it's quite good to see the different maths in different ways. But next to it here, we're going to look at the same question, but we're going to see how we mirror that in a slightly different way with our compact method. Now, compact just means smaller. It just means it's squeezed together. So I've got 2 times 4. 2 times 4, I already know, because I've done my workings out, is 8. And then I've got 2 times 3 tens. 2 times 3 tens is 60. Now, rather than writing it below like this, okay, what I do is I add it on. I know I've got my 0 in the 1s column. So I do my zero added on straight away, okay? So I put in my six here. What two times four is eight, two times three tens is six tens. And I've already there got my 68. And we can see the answers are the same, which means we're doing it right, okay? So we're squeezing this bit together. We're putting in the add-in as we work it out, which is really, really useful, okay? Looking at the next question, as we're going through this, we've got some questions where we end up having two numbers here. And this is what we're going to look at now. So here we've got 24, we've got two tens, four ones, 24 times three. And I've worked out my three times four ones is 12. And I've worked out my three times um, two tens is going to be 60. And when I've worked them out, I get added together, I get 72. Now, this is a slightly trickier way of doing the compact method. So we're going to have a look at this now. So if I jump back to my whiteboard, there we go, already ready. And I've worked out just as we did there. Next to it, again, I'm going to do the compact method. And today, I really want you to look at doing the compact method and the expanded method. Do the expanded first and then do the compact. You're going to be seeing the links between them. That's what we're trying to learn today, is how these different methods link together. So I'm going to start with 24 times 3. I start with 3 times 4. 3 times 4 I know is 12. Now the difference in my compact method, I can put the 2 in. I can't put the 1 in here, because that goes into the tens column. So just like we do when we do addition, we put our 10 below that column. So we've got 1, 10, and 2, 1s. My 10 goes in my 10s column. I've then got here 3 times 2 is 3 times 2 10s, which gives me 6 10s. So that 6 would go in there, and then I add my 1 on. So rather than putting the 6 in, I'm going to do 3 times 2 10s is 6, and then I'm going to add my 1 10, which means I've got 7 10s. Just going to cross it off so I know I've done it, and you can see there. I've got the same answer. I've got 72 for my question. The important thing here is we've got this number underneath, this 10 underneath. We then have to add it back on 
to what we've already got. We have a look at these two questions here. Oh. You can have a go at these two questions. So I want you to pause the video now. I want you to do it with an expanded method and then do a, another method after. And then we'll do an expanded method after that so we can solve it from there. Okay. So 43 times 5, we look at that. Pause the video now and have a go at it. And then 62 times 3, we'll have another look at that video in a second. So pause your video now and have a go at those questions. Okay, if we jump over to my whiteboard, I've already got two laid out. I'm going to do the expanded one this side and then the compact one this side. And you can check to see if yours look the same as mine. So, 5 times 3, I'm writing it down because it's the expanded one. 5 times 3 is 15. I pop it in. 5 times 4 tens. 5 times 40. I know 5 times 4 is 20 and it gets 10 times bigger, so I place that 0 on. So that's 200. And I add them together, I get 215. Okay. If I jump over to this one, 5 times 3 is 15, and I carry that 1 across. That 110 gets carried over to my tens column. I've then got 5 times 4 tens. I know that's 20 tens. So it's going to go in my tens column, and I've already got 110. So I add that 10 on, which gives me 21 tens, and I get. 215 again the same answer so that means i've done it correctly we look at the one below we've got 62 times 3 62 times 3 i'm going to solve this at the bottom i get 2 times 3 or 3 times 2 which is 6 and i've got 3 times 60 6 tens which is 18 for the 3 times 6, 10 times bigger is 180. Add them together, you get 186. Have a little look at this over this side. 2 times 3, I know is 6. I've then got 3 times 6, which is 18, 18 tens. I've got nothing to add at the bottom this time, so I can put my 18 in straight away. And again, I've got the same answer, so I've got it right. Okay. When we're doing our working today, I want to see the expanded method as well as the compact method next to it. So we're looking at this link between the both and trying to spot these links across them. Quick question just to challenge you. Okay, It's a different question to yesterday. It's still 33, but this time it's multiplied by 4. So what might confuse us on this question? What might confuse us on this question? So have a little look, have a think, try it and see what might confuse you or somebody else and then I'll go through it quickly now. So pause the video now and have a little look. Okay, if you're having a look at this, we've got 3 times 4 we know is 12. Okay, and then we've got 3 tens times 4, so we've got 12 again. Okay, put that in the wrong place. Okay, we've got... 12 again and it's that double 12 I'm adding my 110 on here gives me 13 but the fact we've got three times four and then three times four even though it's tens it's that doubleness here just gives us the same number and that's sometimes a little trick that is thrown into questions that just trips people out so just be careful when you get these double numbers you take that little bit more time to make sure we're not making those mistakes okay if we jump on to today's work and we have a little look today. And on the sheet today, the PDF, I know some of you have been printing it out, which is great if you can. If you can't, there's no worries about printing it out. You can just look at the, the, the questions on the, a tablet screen, or on a laptop screen, or whatever, and then just do the workings on a piece of paper. The workings are the important bit. Now, for your workings today, I'd like to see the expanded method, this type of method here, okay? And also the compact method. So for this one, I'll try and do it on the screen. My expanded, me my expanded method I've already been given. My compound method. And if you're just looking at the questions on a screen, absolutely fine. Do it on a plain piece of paper. 
There's no need for you to print the things off to have a go at it. I'm looking at 6 times 4, I know it's 24, so I've got my 4, and I'm carrying my two 10s into the next column. I've then got 4 times 1, 10 is 40, add my 2, gives me 60, and I've got my 64. So I want for both questions the expanded, sometimes you're given it, and the compact. So you might have to work both out, or you might be given them. So trying to spot that link to the compound is really, really useful. Okay, I'm just going to clear this and scroll up so you can see all the questions. And there's two questions where you've got to turn it from the expanded into the compound. And then there's a few which are just compounds in layout, but I'd like you to do both ways for them. So you can double check you're getting the right answer for the questions. This one down here, you've got to work out the three, and then you've got to match them up to your answers. So again, if you're doing it on... Uh, a tablet, just look at the questions and then do the workings out on a piece of paper. There's no need for you to, to do the workings out on, um, on a piece of paper with this printed. You can do it on whatever you've got in front of you. Our apply it, again, is a few questions where you've got a question and then you've got to work it out. And then the big thing I really want you to think about is explaining why. In class, I'm always challenging children to explain why is that wrong? Why is that right? Why are these things happening? So really thinking about why. And then we've got a couple of empty box questions here for you to really think about and try and solve what's going on. If you've managed to finish the solve it and you fancy a bit of a challenge, I will put this one up as well, which is a bit of a longer empty box problem for people to try to figure out those different questions and those different answers. So have a go at those, and then I'll put the answers up for this tomorrow. So you might want to try this, problem solve yourself, and see if you can find the missing answers for this question. As always, just email us your work as you're doing it. It would be great to see it, um, and we're going to put a bit of a prize together for people at the end of the week, so we'll, we'll post the best bits of work. Um, and celebrate the best bits of work that people are doing. So email us your work. It doesn't matter if you printed it out. It doesn't matter if you've done it on a whiteboard. It doesn't matter if you've done it on a plain piece of paper. So use the questions, but present it how you want. As long as today you are looking at doing the expanded method, like we've been working out here, expanded method and the compact method next to it. So that's what you're looking at today, really trying to get that done. Okay, I'll make another video tomorrow and um, hope everybody's well um, and I shall talk to you soon. Goodbye.